Florida Part 4. The Overseas Railroad and Highway. Florida Part 4 The Overseas Railroad and Highway. All about the Overseas Railroad and Highway. With visiting and touring information, geography, history, attractions, and author points of interest. Dr. Sidney Socloth. Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com. 2022. Narration by. Dr. Sidney Socloth, Zoe Phonemes, and Nathan Cole Toth. For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link here. Chapter 1 First, the Overseas Railroad. The Overseas Railroad, also known as Florida Overseas Railroad, was an extension of the Florida East Coast Railway to Key West. The 126-mile stretch of Highway US-1, from Florida City to Key West, is better known as the Overseas Highway. This is an iconic picture of the Overseas Railroad. This is a quotation about the Overseas Railroad. A story of one of the world's richest men. One of the most difficult engineering feats ever conceived. And the most powerful storm ever to strike American shores, less than deferred. The last train to paradise. At the time of the railroad. Key West was a city of almost 30,000 inhabitants. Located 128 miles beyond the end of the Florida Peninsula. The railroad operated from 1912 to 1935. Henry Morrison Flagler, 1830 to 1913, was a principal in Rockefeller. Andrews and Flagler. And later. Standard Oil during the Gilded Age in the United States. At the time, Standard Oil was the largest corporation in the world. Flagler took an interest in Florida while seeking a warmer climate for his ailing first wife in the late 1870s. Returning to Florida in 1881, he became the builder and developer of resort hotels and railroads along the east coast of Florida. Beginning with St. Augustine, Flagler moved progressively south. Flagler helped develop Ormond Beach, Daytona Beach, and Palm Beach and became known as the father of Miami. Flagler's rail network became known as the Florida East Coast Railway, or FEC. The railroad reached Miami in 1896. And Homestead. 30 miles south of Miami, in 1904. The railroad was extended to Key West by 1912. Homestead is today a mainly agricultural community with a population of 20,000. It was devastated by Hurricane Andrew in 1992. The Key West extension was called the eighth wonder of the world. After the United States announced in 1905 the construction of the Panama Canal, Flagler became particularly interested in linking Key West to the mainland. Key West, the United States' closest deepwater port to the canal, could not only take advantage of Cuban and Latin American trade, but the opening of the canal would allow significant trade possibilities with the rest of the world. The next closest deep water was Tampa, which is 300 miles further north and on the western side of the Florida Peninsula. Initially called Flagler's Folly, the construction of the Overseas Railroad required many engineering innovations and vast amounts of labor and monetary resources. The first part of the railroad went from Homestead to the southern tip of the Florida mainland. This is the southern tip of the Florida mainland. 
the railroad was called the eighth wonder of the modern world. Despite the hardships, the final link of the Florida East Coast Railway to Key West was completed in January 1912. This is the Flagler Station in Key West. Chapter 2 The Florida Keys This is Florida from space. This satellite image shows Miami and Key West. The Florida Keys are an archipelago of about 1700 islands off the southern tip of Florida. The Florida Keys begin at the southeastern tip of the Florida Peninsula, about 50 miles south of Miami, and extend in a gentle arc south-southwest and then westward to Key West the westernmost of the inhabited islands, and onto the uninhabited Tortages. The inhabited keys run from Key Largo, 50 miles south of Miami, to Key West. The highest elevation along this entire stretch of islands does not exceed 16 feet, making them very susceptible to sea surges caused by hurricanes. Isla Mirada? In the Middle Keys, means Purple Island. The name Marathon dates back to the origin of the Florida East Coast Railroad. The name came about from the railroad workers who were working night and day to complete the railroad. Due to the unrelenting pace and struggle to complete the project, many of the workers complained that this is getting to be a real marathon and was later used to name the local station along the railroad. Key West and most of the rest of the Keys are on the dividing line between the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. The area where the two bodies merge between Key West and Cuba is called the Straits of Florida. Key Largo, at the northern end, is by far the largest of the Keys. The town there was called Rock Harbor until 1948 when it was renamed Key Largo after a local roadhouse used in the movie Key Largo, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. The Keys lie along the Florida Straits, dividing the Atlantic Ocean to the east from the Gulf of Mexico to the west, and defining one edge of Florida Bay. At the nearest point, the southern tip of Key West is just 94 miles. 151 kilometers from Cuba. Chapter 3 The Dry Tortugas The Keys do not end at Key West. They extend some 70 miles further to some uninhabited small keys known as the Dry Tortugas. On one of these keys, called Garden Key, is Fort Jefferson. The total distance along the Keys from Biscayne Bay off of Miami to the Dry Tortugas is 200 miles. Fort Jefferson is about 68 miles, 109 kilometers, from Key West on Garden Key in the Dry Tortugas. The Dry Tortugas is a national park. The Fort Jefferson Dry Tortugas National Park. Fort Jefferson on Garden Key was a Civil War prison. Fort Jefferson is one of the least visited national parks, with just over 61,000 visitors a year. Only five parks in Alaska and two others draw few e-tourists. During the Civil War, the location was used as a staging area by Union warships and as a military prison. Its most famous prisoners were four civilians, co-conspirators in the assassination of President Lincoln. 1. Dr. Samuel Mudd. Set Lincoln assassin John Wilkes Booth's leg after he fractured it jumping to the stage from the presidential box at Ford's Theatre. Mudd said he didn't know of the plot and was pardoned four years after his conviction. 
His descendants have struggled unsuccessfully for decades to clear his name. The fort was made a national monument in 1935. And the area was designated a wildlife refuge in 1908 and 1992. It was renamed Dry Tortugas National Park. The islands are renowned for the migrating birds that stop over. The Keys in early 1900 was very sparsely populated with just a few hundred settlers. Chapter 4 Key West had a population of 17,000 in 1900. Most of the state's population was in the north, adjacent to Georgia and Alabama. The southern part of the state was mostly an uninhabited area of swamps and wilderness. There was no Miami as such. Instead, there was a fort built during the Seminole Wars on the Miami River known as Fort Dallas, with perhaps a hundred settlers in the area. By 1890, Key West had a population of nearly 18,800 and was the biggest and richest city in Florida. By 1900, the population had increased considerably but was still small. The population was still mainly in the northern part of the state, with the southern portion relatively unpopulated. With the exception of Key West, which was the third most populous city at 17,000. Key West was Florida's largest city in 1890. It reached its peak in 1960 with 34,000. And now it is down to about 24,000. Key West was important as a coaling station in the days of steam-powered ships. This vintage postcard shows Key West coal sheds, weather bureau and machine shops. This is Key West. Circa 1900. This is Key West. Circa 1900. Chapter 5 This was the originally proposed route through the Everglades from Cape Sable at the southern edge of the Florida Peninsula to the Middle Keys. The route that was finally chosen went from Homestead over Jewfish Creek to Key Largo, and then down the Keys to Key West. This is the Everglades and the route of the railroad and the present-day overseas highway. US 1 The route had 17 miles of bridges and 20 miles of landfill. These are some of the engineers and surveyors for the project. No fresh water sources were on the Keys, so it all had to be brought in. Chapter 7 Railroad Workers At one time during construction, 4,000 men were employed. Wages were $1.25 for a 10 to 12 hour day. They worked under conditions of heat, humidity, isolation, hurricanes, mosquitoes, and alligators. Hundreds of workers on the Florida East Coast Railway's overseas extension were lost when a hurricane swept through the Keys and battered Miami on October 18, 1906. Three hurricanes hit the Keys during the years of the railroad construction. In the 1906 hurricane, 125 men died. Joseph C. Meredith was the chief engineer for the Overseas Railroad Project. Chapter 7 Long Key Viaduct has more than two miles of concrete arches. This is the original Long Key Viaduct and the new highway. The islands lie along the Florida Straits. Dividing the Atlantic Ocean to the east from the Gulf of Mexico to the west, and defining one edge of Florida Bay. This is the Long Key Viaduct and Modern U.S. Highway 1. 
The Lonky Viaduct had 180 reinforced concrete arches. A viaduct is a long elevated roadway, usually consisting of a series of short spans supported on arches, piers, or columns. The Long Key Viaduct became the railroad's trademark. An essential part of the railroad construction was the coffer dam. A coffer dam is a temporary watertight enclosure that is pumped dry to expose the bottom of a body of water so that the construction of piers may be undertaken. This is an illustration of a coffer dam. This is a coffer dam. Here is concrete being poured into the coffer dam. This is a coffer dam and bridge pier. These are wooden forms full arch construction. The top of the arch is filled in with dirt and gravel to provide a cushioning roadbed for the railroad tracks. This is a train going over Long Key Viaduct. This is Long Key Viaduct and the new highway. This is Long Key Viaduct and the new highway. Chapter 8 Seven Mile Bridge The Seven Mile Bridge is 35,000 feet, or 6.7 miles long, over water. The tallest point is 65 feet high. At the time, the Seven Mile Bridge was the world's longest continuous bridge. Here are the old Seven Mile Bridge and the new Seven Mile Bridge by Pigeon Key. The new Seven Mile Bridge for the highway was constructed in 1982. It is a precast concrete segmented bridge with 223 spans and took two and a half years to build. Built in 1908 and rebuilt after the 1909 hurricane, the Seven Mile Bridge between Knights Key and No Name Key was nine miles long, including approaches. A 253-foot swinging span on the Seven Mile Bridge allowed ships to pass from the Gulf to the Atlantic Ocean. The swinging span on the old Seven Mile Bridge has now been removed. The Seven Mile Bridge is supported by 546 piers. This shows the Seven Mile Bridge and the Long Key Viaduct. This is Pigeon Key and Seven Mile Bridge. This is the very small island of Pigeon Key. Chapter 9, Bahia Honda Bridge Bahia Honda means deep bay. This shows the location of the Bahia Honda Bridge. This shows the old and new Bahia Honda Bridges. This shows the old and new Bahia Honda Bridges. The water at Bahia Honda is 30 to 35 feet deep. This is the old Bahia Honda Bridge. A section was removed to allow for ship passage. During the seven years of construction, five hurricanes threatened to halt the project. Costs were estimated at between $20 million and $40 million, $600 to $1,200 million today. Chapter 10 Completion in of the Overseas Railroad in 1912 The railroad, called the Eighth Wonder of the World, cost about 30 to 50 million dollars, 900 million to 1.5 billion dollars today, to build. Despite the hardships, the final link of the Florida East Coast Railway was completed in 1912. In that year, a proud Henry Flagler rode the first train into Key West aboard his private rail car Rambler, marking the completion of the railroad's overseas connection to Key West and the linkage by railway of the entire east coast of Florida. 
Visa crowds greeting Flagler at QS in 1912. This is the Flagler Railroad Station in Key West. These are vintage posters about the Overseas Railroad. Chapter 11 While the Overseas Highway today runs along the former Overseas Railroad right-of-way, Portions of early highways in the Keys came into existence early, while the railroad was still operating. In the 1920s, Florida was the site of a real estate bubble fueled by easy credit and advertisers, promoting a lifestyle of sunshine and leisure. The concept of an overseas highway began with the Miami Motor Club in 1921. The Florida land boom of the 1920s was underway, and the club wanted to attract tourists to easily reached fishing areas, which could only be reached by boat or train at the time. The land boom also attracted real estate interests who sought access by car to the Upper Keys, with thousands of acres of undeveloped land. The completion of the railroad had proved that a highway through the Keys was feasible. State Road 4A opened in 1928 and was an extension of the route, running from Miami to Homestead. It was in two segments with a 41-mile gap in between. The first was from the mainland through Key Largo to Louis-Matacombe Key. And the second segment was the Louis Keys from No Name Key to Key West. An automobile ferry service connected a 41-mile gap between Lower Matacum Bay and No Name Keys. Chapter 12 Construction of the highway in the Keys continued in the Depression years of the early 1930s. Hundreds of World War I veterans seeking early payment of wartime bonuses we employed for construction on the roadway and bridges as part of a government relief program. Chapter 13 The Labo Day Hurricane of 1935 was a Category 5 hurricane, often called the Storm of the Century. Construction on a bridge connecting Lower Matakum Bay Key and Long Key was already underway when the Category 5 Labor Day hurricane struck Isla Mirada on September 2, 1935. The hurricane caused widespread damage throughout the area and destroyed much of the Overseas Railroad in the Upper Keys. More than half of the over 400 fatalities from the hurricane were veterans and their families. This is still the strongest hurricane ever to hit the U.S. winds, were estimated at being up to 200 miles per hour. The 1935 hurricane struck with full intensity at Matacombe Key in the vicinity of Isla Morada. The main transportation route linking the Florida Keys to mainland Florida was a single railroad line, the Florida Overseas Railroad portion of the Florida East Coast Railway. A 10-car evacuation train, sent down from Homestead, was washed off the track by the storm surge and high winds near Isla Mirada on Upper Matacum Bay Key. The train was supposed to rescue a group of World War I veterans who, as part of a government relief program, were building a new road bridge in the Upper Keys. The engineer chose to back the train down the single track line in hopes of saving time on the outward trip, and was unable to reach the waiting veterans before the storm did. Only the locomotive remained upright on the rails, and had to be barged back to Miami several months later. The rescue train stalled at Isla Morada station when hit by a 20-foot wall of water. 40 miles of track we destroyed in the 1935 hurricane. About half the population of the Middle Keys, 500 to 700 people, died. The storm killed between 400 and 700 people and devastated Long Key and adjacent areas. The portion of the Overseas Railroad in the Middle Keys was heavily damaged and partially destroyed in the Labor Day Hurricane of 1935, 
a Category 5 hurricane that is often called the storm of the century. The Labo de Hurricane of 1935 was born as a small tropical disturbance due east of Florida near the Bahamas in late August. On September 1st, the tropical storm strengthened to a Category 1 hurricane. As the hurricane entered the Gulf Stream, intensification became considerably more rapid as its track made a gentle turn to the northwest toward Isla Mirada in the Upper Keys. The hurricane reached its peak intensity late on September 2. The Labor Day hurricane was the most intense hurricane known to have struck the United States and is one of the strongest recorded landfalls worldwide. These are the most intense landfalling U.S. hurricanes. The damage sustained by the Florida East Coast Railroad in the hurricane was so great that it was not economically feasible to repay and continue operations. So, the decision was made to sell the Florida East Coast Railroad extension to the state of Florida in 1935 for $640,000, which corresponds to $15 million in today's money. Chapter 14 Now, the Overseas Highway The 126-mile stretch of Highway US-1 from Florida City to Key West is better known as the Overseas Highway. Or the highway that goes to sea. The Overseas Highway runs for 126 miles along the Keys down to Key West as Highway use of Highway 1. The highway links the Keys to the mainland using 43 bridges. Large parts of the Overseas Highway were built on the former right-of-way of the Overseas Railroad, the Key West extension of the Florida East Coast Railway. Completed in 1912, the Overseas Railroad was heavily damaged and partially destroyed in the Labor Day Hurricane of 1935. Already bankrupt, the Florida East Coast Railway was financially unable to rebuild the destroyed sections. The roadbed and remaining bridges were sold to the state of Florida for $640,000 which built the Overseas Highway to Key West, using much of the remaining railway infrastructure. The original construction of the Overseas Highway used many of the bridges of the former railroad, including truss bridges, where the roadway was built on top of the trusses. Highway construction began in November of 1936. The card sound shortcut was 17 miles shorter. This shows the card sound road. Note that the highway is cantilevered over the previous railroad. This is the old 7 mile highway. This is the old 7 mile highway. The old rails from the railroad we used as guardrails for the highway. Uh, again, we see the original railroad tracks used as guardrails. This is the completed highway. This is the Bahia Honda Bridge. Recommended video. Key West to Miami Highway Construction 1935, Duration, 1 minute, 34 seconds. Chapter 15 Highway Completion, March 29, 1938 The Overseas Highway was completed on March 29, 1938. This is from the Miami Daily News of March 29, 1938. The opening of the Overseas Highway on the Seven Mile Bridge at Pigeon Key on March 29, 1938. This is a vintage postcard of the Overseas Highway near Pigeon Key. 
This is a vintage postcard of the overseas highway near Pigeon Key. This is a vintage postcard of the overseas highway. Portions of the road were tolled until 1954. The toll for automobiles was $1 plus 25 cents per passenger. The toll booths were removed from the overseas highway in 1954. The entire roadway of the overseas highway was substantially rebuilt in the 1980s. Most of these older bridges built for railroads have been replaced by more modern bridges that can accommodate more than two lanes of traffic. This is the Jewfish Creek Bridge on the Overseas Highway in Key Largo. Florida Keys Overseas Highway extends for 20 miles along Key Largo. Chapter 16 Use of Highway 1 Locations along the Overseas Highway from Key West to Key Largo are commonly given as mile markers. Numbering starts in Key West and increases towards the east and northeast of the path of the highway over the Keys. The Overseas Highway was designated U.S. Highway 1 in 1944. Businesses along the highway began listing their locations by mile markers, adding decimal parts to indicate locations more precisely between mile marker signs. Outside of Key West and the city of Marathon, street addresses along the highway are based on the mile markers, using a four to six digit number with no decimal point. So that a building between mile markers 88 and 89 might have an address of 88650. The National Highway Act of 1925 replaced named highways with numbered highways, increasing in numbers from east to west and from north to south. The east-west highways we assigned odd numbers, starting with US-1 along the east coast, and ending with US-101 on the west coast. Later, starting in the 1950s, the interstate highway system followed a similar pattern, except the numbers increased from west to east and from south to north. This started with I-5 on the west coast and ended with I-95 along the east coast, and I-8 and I-10 in the south and I-90 and I-94 in the north. US-1 is a highway that goes along the east coast of the United States. It runs 2,390 miles, 3,846 kilometers, from Key West in the south to Fort Kent, Maine, at the Canadian border in the north. This is USF Highway 1 in Maine. US Highway 1 runs 2,390 miles from Key West to Fort Kent, Maine, at the Canadian border. This is the beginning of U.S. Highway 1 in Key West. This is the U.S. Highway 1. Mile Zero Marker in Key West. The Florida Keys Overseas Heritage Trail is under development and when completed, will have more than 70 miles of trail paved in segments along a 106-mile corridor from Key Largo. Mile marker 106.4 to Key West. Mile marker 0. Pigeon Key and the modern and historic 7-mile bridges are notable icons of the Florida Keys. In recent years, Pigeon Key was used by the University of Miami as an oceanography laboratory. The current efforts to restore the buildings on the island have resulted in the establishment of a railroad museum there. The new E7 Mile Bridge does not have direct access to Pigeon Key. People going there must walk on 2.2 miles 3.5 kilometers of the original 7 Mile Bridge from its northern end on Knights Key. Or take a shuttle bus to reach the island. Between 1978 and 1982, the Bahia Honda Bridge was widened to four lanes. 
Many of the original bridges were replaced during the 1980s. Many old concrete bridges of the Overseas Railroad remain in use as fishing piers and pedestrian paths. This is the Seven Mile Bridge. The bridges are inspected every two years. Bridge inspection Most of the overseas highway is two-lane, and there are no plans to widen the highway. Evacuation is mandatory for hurricanes of Category 3, 110 to 130 miles per hour, or greater. However, there have been no hurricanes of Category 3 or greater in the past 50 years. Recommended videos, Florida Part 4, The Overseas Railroad and Highway. Recommended video, A Century in the Sun, Henry Flagler and the Making of Modern Florida. Recommended video, Flagler's Train. This is a one-hour documentary that chronicles the imagination and achievements of Henry Morrison Flagler, who spearheaded the development of the Overseas Railway connecting Key West to the existing Florida East Coast Railway. Recommended video, The Great Labo de Florida Keys Hurricane of 1935. Recommended video, Florida Keys Overseas Highway is named All-American Road. Florida Part 4 The Overseas Railroad and Highway. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.